Okay, let's move on to week five. Um, starts Friday night. Washington is at UCLA. Washington, a two and a half or three point favorite. Um, what are you looking for in this game? Because I feel like both of these teams have actually been playing pretty well. Washington has been, has been a bit more high profile. Some of the sure. better teams they've played. UCLA just got done absolutely taking Colorado to the woodshed last week, <laughs> um, which everyone is doing to Colorado these days. That's right. Um, <laughs> this is at UCLA, which makes me think maybe um, they have a chance. Um, but Washington has looked really good. What do you think? Yeah, they have. UCLA has only played Bowling Green, Alabama State, South Alabama, and then Colorado, who, as you mentioned, is trash. So 4-0, and and should mm-hmm. be. But, yeah, not impressive wins. We've all been impressed with Washington. Like, we've we've already just been talking about that. So mm-hmm. I like Washington. I think, I think Washington will win outright. I think that's the side to be on if you're betting. Um, By the way, I, I just saw the line is up to three and a half. So I was it, wrong on the line. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's at three and a half. I, I don't know if it'll be one of my locks. Um, it's it's one I have circled. Washington's the side for sure because UCLA, UCLA, we like, they haven't played anyone. So it's, yeah, mm-hmm. so hard to know. Washington has. Um, let's, yeah, I'm just going to let that set for a little bit. Just going to let that, let that soak in there. But uh, like Washington would be the side for me. How about you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I'm, I'm also like, jotting that down as a potential lock we'll get to that towards the end of the episode here but um yeah i I do think that washington has looked very impressive this year and ucla like that doesn't mean they're bad or anything they just haven't played anybody (laughs) right we we don't know like we don't know about ucla they're the unproven factor yeah exactly all right saturday we have a pretty big showdown um the big noon kickoff is michigan at iowa um Michigan at 10 or 10 and a half point favorite. Um, is that updated? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 10 and a half. The, and over a half under, yes. the over under is at up to 42 this week. Oh. So way ahead of 34 <laughs> or whatever it was last week. So, and by the way, Michigan's offense is humming. So that over under is that's, that's a tasty line right there. I don't, I've been holding off, but like, mm-hmm. I, I think, yeah, I, I think Michigan can, can, can get them. Like I really do. I, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I mean, just heaven forbid, Iowa gets a defensive touchdown or something in there. That over almost <laughs> certainly hits. So, yeah, it is in Kinnick though, Kinnick Stadium, right. Iowa City, which crazy things, dude, crazy yeah. things. It's kind of like Auburn, like they just have. There's just some like a little bit of magic in there in that mm-hmm. field, where yeah, wild things happen to top ten teams like on the road. So yeah, yeah, it's mm-hmm. a spot just to be be wary. Keep keep an eye on that game. Yeah, as far as the spread goes, like this is one I would absolutely stay away from. Yes, because I could see a lot of different potential outcomes here. Yeah, this does sort of feel like the type of Iowa game that is just going to get crazy, and it'll be a close game in the fourth quarter, and the place will be just absolute bouncing. So, yeah. we'll see what happens. All right, Kentucky is at Ole Miss. We referred to this game a little bit earlier. This is this <laughs> this is kind of a fun little fun little matchup here. Kind of a contrast of styles. Yes. Um, Kentucky hasn't exactly been lighting the world on fire recently, but they're they're undefeated, and that's what matters. They are a six and a half point underdog to Ole Miss right here. Um, does that feel about right to you with Ole Miss at home, or are you surprised that the top ten team is an underdog here? Yeah, you said top ten team underdog. Like yeah. that just that just yeah, have a hard time grasping that six and a half. That's like that's a big number, dude. Like mm-hmm. Kentucky plays good defense. Yeah, not. I'm staying away from this one. I, I don't have a good feel. This is just a game I'm staying away from kind of um, as a whole. Interesting mm-hmm. styles. You talk about the clash of styles. It stoops in Kentucky. Fundamentals, defense. We're going to out-competent you pretty much versus yeah. Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin just running the ball up and down the field or throwing it. Yeah, either one. Just flying up and down the field, just breakneck pace. It's it's going to be good. It's going to be good TV. So Yeah. So- I I think I kind of actually I, w- I would almost be on the Ole Miss side here. I almost feel like they are a touchdown better at home, maybe than Kentucky, just because I trust them more. That said, like I'm not touching this game at all. Um, <laughs> right, right. Ole Miss hasn't yeah. really played anybody yet. Um, they've they're undefeated. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is the type of game you just enjoy and and don't <laughs> don't ruin your Saturday by betting on it. <laughs> Start your noon window off with just some good watches. Just watch Michigan, yes. <laughs> Iowa, Kentucky, Ole Miss. Just enjoy yourself. 
um, and then get to the betting later on. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Oklahoma is at TCU coming off that loss to Kansas State and TCU coming off a good win against SMU. Oklahoma, a four and a half or five point favorite. What do you <laughs> do you have expectations? Because it is it does like if we looked at this line a week ago, we'd have probably thought, OK, by the way, I'm wrong. The line is up to seven. Um, I wrote all these lines down a, a day ago and now they're all changing. Um, does that make more a little more sense to you than four and a half or five? <laughs> yeah, I've got six and a half right now. And that's okay. updated. So, like I I'll be taking Oklahoma at six okay. and a half. That's the side I would I would be on. I think bounce back game. I really do think it's going to be a bounce back game. Mm-hmm. It's on the road. It's in TCU. I don't care. I think Oklahoma is a really good football team. I think they had a bad week. I think we'll yeah. see them get back, get kind of back to where they were for the first couple of weeks of the year. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Oklahoma for me is the side to be on. I think simply because I think they're a, just a, a, a really good football team. I think they're mm-hmm. a much better football team than TCU is right now. Um, yeah. I I'd be feeling fairly confident um, on, on Oklahoma. I don't hate that, but I also have, I have a theory that um, if we took the underdog in every single Big Twelve game, we might turn out okay. <laughs> I do like that. I do like that. And we haven't had a lock fight this year. Like last True. year, we had a, a couple of lock fights. Yeah, I'm like I'm ready for a good lock fight. Yeah, uh, uh, boy, this week is a little tough on the locks. Like we say, Vegas eventually figures these teams out. Yeah. It feels like we've started to get to that point of the season. Yeah, um, we have. It, it's it's getting a little tougher for these. All right, Texas Tech is at Kansas State. Yet another um, Big 12 game that's kind of interesting. Texas Tech and Kansas State both coming off huge upsets, huge wins for both of these programs. And it's always interesting to see how teams kind of respond in those types of situations. Kansas State is a seven to seven and a half point favorite here. Yeah. yeah. Seven, seven to eight. Um, eight. Yeah. It, eight. it looks eight like right it now. varies quite a bit. Yeah. Um, Man, I don't know. Like to me, it almost feels like I would just take the points here and the underdog. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, don't hate it. Don't hate it. Staying away from it simply because sure. I don't know how these teams are going to be reacting coming off of just the, a huge emotional win. It was both of their Super Bowls last week. Yeah, like Can- Kansas State Super Bowl is, is Oklahoma. Texas Sex Super Bowl was Texas. Mm-hmm. You, you want them? You both want it? Like how how do you react? And and whoever has the least amount of hangover. Will will win this game. I don't have a strong feeling on it. The number feels way too big. Kansas State at eight feels mm-hmm. almost like they know something we don't, which is kind of yeah. scary. So yeah, staying just kind of staying away from this one in general. Sure. All right. Purdue is at Minnesota. This this line has risen two points already in the last day. Yeah. Minnesota now a twelve or twelve and a half point favorite. It was ten or ten and a half earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Minnesota is just destroying teams. Is is this total high enough? Like because Purdue is not bad. <laughs> They're not bad, but Minnesota is crushing teams. Like, yes, they are. absolutely, absolutely smashing teams. Some of these teams are actually, like, half decent. Like, we talked about, mm-hmm. like, these aren't just nobodies that they're beating. They're beating some decent teams. Margin of victory, I, I talked about how it was only behind Alabama. Mm-hmm. By the way, so it's Alabama, Minnesota, Michigan, then Georgia, then Ohio State. So of those five teams, all have been playoff teams within the last two years. Minnesota is right up there in the top five with those four powerhouses. It's good company. So, right. That's great. I love that. So I think, I think that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm, I would be Minnesota's the side for me. No number is too big until they lose They're five, four and zero against the spread this year. Like they, they can't mm-hmm. make a number big enough. Yeah. I'm I'd be, I'm, I'm, you know, I think that the, uh, the Minnesota side is tasty this week. They are, they are a good team. We talked about them a little bit kind of in a recap of last week. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, it does feel like they almost have to be kind of the considered the favorite in the Big Ten West at this point. Right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. All right. Oregon State is at Utah. Uh, I love Oregon State. We've talked about this. Yet mm-hmm. another good Pac-12 game that is on the Pac-12 network. So I will not be watching this game. Yeah, me neither. Um, what do you expect out of this game? Two really good football teams, two extremely yeah. well coached football teams, I mm-hmm. would say. Two teams that play above their talent level. Like they're maybe not as talented as as the most talented teams in the nation, kind of a step below it, but they can play with anybody just because mm-hmm. like they have extreme they're yeah, just they're they're a unit. They have a really just a well structured team, really good culture, it seems like, for both these programs. Mm-hmm. Um 
Yeah, I, it's unfortunate that we can't watch. By the way, like who has right. the Pac-12 network? Does any? <laughs> I I know nobody. I know a ton of college football fans. No one that I know has the Pac-12 network. So maybe right. it's yeah, East Coast bias. They could just chalk it up to some East Coast bias that we don't care enough to watch their football games. They should at least put their crappier games on there, right? Not right. the ones that have Oregon State versus USC, and Oregon State versus Utah, because those are low-key, really good games. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. The so the line is Utah by ten and a half. That would be an Oregon State lean for me. Um, yeah, we'll see if I'm, if it becomes a lock or not. But that that would be my lean at this point. All right, a good ACC game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wake Forest is at Florida State. Yes, two teams that have. Looked pretty good. I would say Wake Forest has looked kind of as we expected. They they fought with Clemson pretty well last week. Right. Florida State has been a revelation this year. Um, they are favored by seven right. against Wake Forest, which says something that Wake Forest has played well this year, and they're still a seven-point underdog against this Florida State team. Florida State is really humming on all cylinders right now. That said, does this feel like maybe it's a bit high, or do you or can you see this line? maybe I, I can see the line. Like I, yeah, I can see where they're going, especially after watching wakes defense, I guess like Sam Hartman, like I'd take him in any number of points <laughs> like <laughs> against Florida state. Like he's been incredible. I will say there's actually a fairly low likelihood that this game even gets played. Um, mm. her, the hurricane coming through is threatening a lot of the Florida games this yeah. upcoming Saturday. Like, so I know, um, I think Florida university of Florida has a home game. I think it's against Eastern Washington. I've heard them talking about low likelihood that they'll end up playing it at all, unless they move it to a different site. So maybe this game gets played at, at a neutral site, or maybe they move it up to wake forest. Maybe they do a couple different things. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, something to keep an eye on for, for games this week is yeah. Just weather. I it's a hurricane, fairly strong hurricane, Florida state, Tallahassee right in the path of it just something to keep an eye yeah. on that would be a real shame if it was out outright canceled I hope they can find a place to play it because yeah this this would be a fun game to watch I believe no doubt all right Virginia Tech is at North Carolina nothing hugely notable from a nation from a national perspective here uh, but two brand names at least and I think it, we might learn a little bit about um kind of the the weak side of the ACC if you will um North Carolina, eight and a half or nine point favorite. Does that feel about right? Just kind of based on the way Virginia Tech has looked so far, which they kind of just got blown up by West Virginia. Yeah, but I mean, you're you're actually expecting the North Carolina defense to hold that big of a lead, which is, <laughs> that feels like a like a like a, a bit much. So yeah, just kind of staying away from that line just feels, sure. feels funky. We You mentioned Vegas getting good. Vegas is dialed. Like it, yeah. we, we had some advantage. There were some, some easy lines in the first couple of weeks. We, I think I started out, it was, I think I had a four and a week, week one. Like it just mm -hmm. started, everything was just clicking. It was smooth. Yeah. It's, um, it's going the other way. Like they are <laughs> catching up to us in a hurry. So yeah. just time just to kind of consolidate and, and fade teams. You mentioned like you like fading teams, like just teams that aren't very good. Mm -hmm. or I'm going to start fading units like the North Carolina defensive unit. There I'm going to like kind of bet against them. So yes. the over under at 52, maybe that's something to take a look at. Maybe Virginia Tech's uh, offense gets right in this game. There you go. I like that. All right. Oklahoma State is at Baylor. This is another example of a top 10 team being an underdog against a top 20 team. Baylor, a two and a half point favorite. Did, yeah. They played twice last year. Once was in the Big 12 championship game. This is this is a fun matchup here. Oklahoma State has looked good um, this this year. and they, they had a bye this last week. Baylor has looked really good just coming off of a fairly dominant win against Iowa State. Right. Any leans at all? To me, this is like a toss-up completely. I don't know what's going to happen, but do you yeah. have any leans? No, total coin flip. Um, no no money going out on this one at all <laughs> from, yeah. from that standpoint. It, it's a coin flip just overall, like from, from a, just an actual money line decision. Like, I don't know who's going to win mm -hmm. this game. Um, both of these teams have looked good in stretches. Um, this year and they're both very competent like we, we talked about coaches and, and cultures this is another game where it's kind of the same thing like both really well-run programs and they're, they happen to play each other and someone's going to lose so yeah just kind of staying away from it just as a betting standpoint but uh, really it'll be a fun game to watch um, just from a, a neutral a neutral fan perspective exactly yet another game that you should not ruin your Saturday by betting on it just enjoy correct. the game correct okay Iowa State is at Kansas 
Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Iowa State, a three or three and a half point favorite. It's garbage. It's garbage. They don't care about Kansas. Come on, Vince. You're, you're with me on this one. Okay. It's the disrespect. The disrespect. So disrespectful. <laughs> all right. Is do you feel like you'll you'll find any time to watch this game at all, or is this just a game that you kind of slides by because there's so many other good games Saturday? Well, yeah. I mean, it's three thirty window. So we have Alabama, Arkansas, which we're gonna get to in a little bit, which I think is fascinating. We just talked about Oklahoma State, Baylor. That's also yeah. at the same time. Then Wake Forest and Florida State, also at the same time, if it's played. Yeah. Like this is number four. Like in yep. in the three thirty window, it's just a loaded three thirty window. So, yeah. I mean, I, I like to say that I'm going to watch a, a bit, mm-hmm. but how much, I, I really don't know. I think that this is the type of game you really want to pay attention to the scoreboard. Like, you just kind of check the score yes. every once in a while. Right. And, and you'll learn something about these teams based on what happens. But maybe we don't have time to watch the actual game. <laughs> yeah. All right, you mentioned it. Alabama goes to Arkansas. Um. Arkansas coming off that really deflating loss to Texas A&M where it seemed like they were the better team. Sure. Alabama is a 17 point favorite here. I would, <laughs> that feels like a tempting line because I feel like Arkansas is probably better than that. But also mm-hmm. if you bet Arkansas, if you bet Arkansas, mm-hmm. by definition, you would be betting against Alabama. And do you yeah. want to do that to your Saturday? Who knows? I'm too smart. Yeah, I'm too <laughs> smart to bet against Nick Saban. Um, that said, 17 is a very large line. And Arkansas is a little undervalued, it feels like. Had they made that field goal, had Arkansas, had that ball been six inches to the left mm-hmm. and gone in and not hit the top of the freaking goal post and went then in there and Arkansas wins, what would the line be then? Because it feels like yeah. it would be more like more like – 10 11 something like that so it's a home game this is in Fayetteville this isn't in Bryant Denny yeah. Alabama struggled sometimes away from home I I could see this game getting a little close there third fourth sure. quarter I mean Arkansas likes to run the ball they've got some decent receivers mm-hmm. KJ Jefferson is a really good quarterback he is he can run and throw dual threat so mm-hmm. not gonna bet on this game gonna just stay away from it Arkansas like would be the side like I would be riding yeah. on the Arkansas side. I think, even though that is so dumb because you're betting against <laughs> Nick Saban, and why would you ever do that? <laughs> so forget the line for a second, because we're just. I think I'm with you. Like we're both just going to watch this game for fun and enjoy it. Yeah. Alabama hasn't. They haven't looked incredible in every single game this year. No. Like, is no, there haven't. a chance that there's an outright upset here for a really good Arkansas team? Yes. Yes, there is. Alabama's next three games at Arkansas, home against AM. and Remember, like we've been waiting for on that game since the summer when yeah. like, Jimbo literally had the press conference. Like since he called that press conference, we've had that game circled. And then after that, they go to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a very tough three week stretch. Like that's all in the next three weeks. Yeah, I think they could lose one of those games. I really do. I think they could lose one. I think Arkansas, like, yeah, no, I, you could absolutely convince me. I, I'm not there. I'm not there by myself, but I could easily be convinced that Arkansas, KJ Jefferson has a really good game. I could see that happening. I could absolutely see that happening. So I'm not going to call it again. I've, yeah, uh, Saban's been around far too long. I'm, again, too smart for that. Can't get me on that again. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I could be convinced. That's all I'm going to say. I could be convinced. Definitely a game we'll be paying attention to. Yeah, yes. it, w- it will be the number one game on my screen, no doubt. Yeah. Okay, a fun SEC matchup. Texas A&M is at Mississippi State. Yeah. Mississippi State, a three-and-a-half-point favorite here, which in so- on, on one hand kind of feels like surprising, and on the other hand feels perfectly right. <laughs> um. Do you feel like you know what to expect from this game? Or is this the type of thing where you're just like, who knows what's going to happen? It's it's Mississippi State. They are either incredible or terrible. You just never know what's going to happen. And we know their defense is going to be good and their offense is going to suck. Like, did I sum it up? Or do you have more to add to yeah. that? No, no, that's, <laughs> that's fair. Like, you're going to see a, an offensive system that is so smooth under Leach, where, where Rodgers – is he's in complete control of that offense 
Mm-hmm. And and I think you talked about it in early in the year, um, just about how their, their receivers, it's almost like they're receiver proof. Like it doesn't really matter who they have at receiver because the receivers will have a lot of yards in that offense. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it's, it's, it's working out to that point. They're putting up points. I don't understand how they're favored <laughs> like at home. <laughs> I, I don't really understand that, but yeah. a ms offense doesn't give you any reason to think that they could win a shootout. If Mississippi state gets a couple touchdowns early, yeah, I know that's what Arkansas just did, and I thought a and would go away after those two touchdowns from Arkansas, and they didn't. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't think Arkansas – or I don't think A&M gets lucky a second week in a row. I don't. Like, I, I think, yeah, after that emotional game, I – like, Mississippi State feels like the side. And that's the thing. Vegas also kind of thinks that Mississippi State's the side. Right. Like, if, if – how is Mississippi State a three-and-a-half-point – favorite against number 17 AM who has way more talent. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like so yeah, it's a little wink wink, nod, nod. Um, Mississippi State's probably the side to be on. I don't know if you see this. Tickets you can get in for as low as $14. No as way. A, uh, from a ticket. Just for for some comparison here, right? Uh-huh. The Gardner Webb Marshall game you can get into for $22. <laughs> so it only costs you eight more dollars to get into Gardner Webb Marshall than it does to get into Mississippi State AM which is baffling to me. I don't understand that. Uh, yeah, all. I don't know either. How, how does that make any sense? Because I feel like this is this has to be a huge game for Mississippi State fans. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Super Bowl-type levels. Like, I don't, I don't understand yeah. from Mississippi State's perspective. All right. Okay, another SEC matchup in the evening. LSU is at Auburn. Yeah. A, oh, I better double-check this line. It's, so I, It's up to nine now. Yeah, is it really? It keeps, it's skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, Is there... Is there a number that's big enough, though? (laughs) 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 No, probably not. Probably not. Arkansas, dude, so dang bad. There's, I mean, sorry, Auburn. I mean, Auburn. 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 Yeah, the 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 offense for them is is rough. I I still have an eight out there, by the way. So do you? Yeah. Yeah. I I don't. I would LSU is obviously clearly the side. If you can get them an eight. I mean, God bless yeah. you. I think it, I think it started out at seven, and it's yeah, yeah, it's it's quickly going up. So yeah, I I mean, I think I think this is it for Harson. I think his next loss will be his last loss at Auburn. Yeah. I think he gets the axe after probably this game. Like yeah, they just they they really had a a a God is an Auburn fan game like <laughs> last week where just things happen that don't make sense. Like I don't think they get two of them. And this is nationally televised. Yeah, I think LSU is actually sneaky good. LSU is the side to be on. I might make that one of my locks. I definitely have it circled already. Yeah, I was down on LSU before the season, and they've they've definitely played better than uh, I expected. Right. Um, that's right. That, that would be the side. We'll talk about our locks later, but yeah, that's that would be my lean at this point. Mm-hmm. Okay, West Virginia at Texas. West Virginia coming off a big win, and it was on a Thursday night, so slight, slightly a, a couple days extra. Um, to prepare here, Texas coming off that upset loss um, in Lubbock. Texas is a nine and a half or ten point favorite here. Um, how much do we believe in our zone blitz darlings? <laughs> we believe in them a lot, but we don't believe enough to be putting okay. money on them against Texas in a revenge game or like a, a, a get right game for Texas. Right. Yeah, I just, eh, I'll just, I'll pass. Yeah, no, no lock of the week for me. We we love West Virginia. Don't get me wrong. Rooting yeah. for them, absolutely, absolutely rooting for them. Uh, we're not we're not going to be betting on them. At least Ashton's not going to be. Fair enough. That's kind of exactly how I feel. I would love to do it. I would yeah. really love to just go ahead and say ah, that's too many points. West Virginia that's can right. cover that. But but <laughs> then you you just never know. Like it could turn out to be Texas by twenty one because they like oh okay we need to bounce back from this embarrassment. But yeah yeah that's right. All right, huge evening game here. NC State is at Clemson. This is a top 10 matchup, I believe. Yes. Um, Clemson, the line's down to six and a half. Mm-hmm. It was it was a full touchdown. Right. Um, Clemson had trouble with Wake Forest last week, and I feel like NC State is maybe more of a complete team than Wake Forest. Yes. Um, maybe also a bit more frustrating in some aspects of the offense. Um, Very much so, yes. Devin Leary, good quarterback. Mm-hmm. DJ played well last week. He did. The defensive backs did not. They will did NC not. State will NC State throw the ball enough to take advantage of that the way they should? 
because no. they no, Fair they enough. will not. <laughs> they, they, okay, no, but it's not just me, dude. Okay, the over-under to this game is 42 and a half. Wow. Like, that's like Iowa levels of low. Goodness. Yeah, I know. So like, Bo- Vegas is thinking that these teams are just going to kind of sit just sit on the ball pretty much. And yeah. no, it's going to be a KG affair. No one's going to be trying to, yeah, throw haymakers. And Clemson's going to figure out their, their secondary problems and play a little bit of defense. And that this game... Yeah, they get into the fourth quarter and it's 17 13, 17 14 type game, something like that. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, and then maybe a couple more touchdowns. Vegas thinks that it's low scoring. So, yeah, I can like this probably why the line is so low is like it's mm-hmm. hard to beat someone by that much when you have that low of an over under. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, no, I'm not moving on it. How about you? I'm not, I'm not moving on it either. The line feels pretty good to me. Yeah, I agreed. do think. If I don't know, so the reason I sort of mentioned the the thing with the passing game for for NC State against Clemson's defensive backs is Dave Dorn is that classic coach who's really good at getting his team prepared, really good at developing his talent, makes questionable decisions in games as far as just like they run the ball too much. Yes, they, they, the best thing they have on offense is a great quarterback. Um, yes, there's a slight chance. There's a non-zero chance that Devin Leary goes to the NFL and is like the next Justin Herbert. Like probably <laughs> not, but there is that yeah. chance. Yeah. And and I feel like if they would let him throw the ball, I mean, go, every single first down, go play action. I'm serious. Like every single one, play action. Every single time. And I think he would put up 450 passing yards against this Clemson secondary. Just yeah. saying. No, <laughs> but I, they're not going I, to do that. No, th- yeah, zero chance that happens. I like where your head's at, though. Like don't mind that at all. Um, top five matchup. This is really big for the ACC to have yeah. multiple top twenty-five on top twenty-five matchups. Mm-hmm. To like that's huge. AC the ACC kind of viewed as a down conference over all mm-hmm. the last couple of years needed this. This is showing some depth for them. Um, yeah, good for NC State to to be four zero and just to get into this situation. Um, mm-hmm. Lot, yeah, a lot more on the schedule too. It's not just Clemson that's good. Like, there's they have some other teams here that are left. I'm just interested to watch. Like, I'm just interested to see what happens. I kind of have a feeling it's going to be a boring game. Like, I, I could be, <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling yeah. it's going to be a really kind of a dud. And so, yeah, for for that reason and and for that reason only, just kind of staying away from any any number here in that game. Sure. Okay. So one final matchup, I'll just talk about a little bit. This is kind of a helmet matchup. Stanford is at Oregon. Um, the the rivals who early in the 2000s or 2010s, it was this was like the matchup in the Pac-12. Yeah. They both have some things that I like about their teams this year. Any reason Stanford, to think Stanford doesn't? Yeah. Well, they have a good quarterback. Okay, that's it. You're right. Yeah, they do. T- Tanner McKee is a good quarterback. Any reason to think it could be a tight, fun game, or is this just Oregon by the line is sixteen and a half? Feels nor feels like relatively a good line, I would say. Like, is this yeah. a boring no, Oregon I, seventeen point win? Maybe, maybe. I I think Oregon could get after him. I'm buying in on Bo Nix, which is a that's a dangerous place to be. <laughs> I understand that, but Stanford is so bad against the spread, absolutely terrible. They, they are zero and three against the spread in their three games. I'm buying Oregon. I think I'm, I think Oregon will win. I think Oregon will cover. It will be one of my locks of the week. It's probably my most confident lock. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm an on Oregon minus sixteen and a half, right below that nice seventeen number. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I like where we're at with the Ducks. Okay. 